Hey there, it's me, Julie, Faith Ann Balzer, and I'm back with another Exploring Art Products video. Today we're talking about Distress Crowns from Tim Holtz and Ranger. So they come in a pack like this of six different colors, um, and this is just one of the sets that they have. And as you can see, what it is, is it's this crayon and kind of a plastic casing that looks a little bit like a marker, and you turn the bottom to um, push more of the crayon out. You can see on the back they explain that they're um, vibrant coloring effects on porous surfaces for mixed media. Uh, they're smooth water reactive pigments, etc., etc., etc. Basically, they blend with water. So, there you can see it. That's what the crayon looks like. And um, again, the colors are very bright. They're the distress colors that you're used to. So, they coordinate it with all the other distress products. So, I thought I'd give them a try. So, the first thing I'm doing is just scratching some color onto a tag. And I can tell you that my first experience is that it's not like a crayon, like a Crayola crayon. It's more like a lipstick. It's kind of soft. So I thought I would try to sort of blend the colors and see if they'll blend out with my fingers. And they do, kind of like pastels do, which is really nice. Um, and then I thought I would sort of layer up on there and actually layer the two colors together. And you can see it actually makes orange, which is great. And there looks like there's a little bit of contamination on there, which we'll explore in a little bit. But I wanted to see how that sort of blended in. But you'll see that when I actually streak it down, there's not much pink in that yellow. So I don't think you actually have to worry about contaminating tip to tip. So now I'm taking some dirty water. You should probably take some clean water, but I'm just using some dirty water. Um, and I'm going to try to sort of see what happens when I blend that out. So it doesn't look like there's a lot of much um, color traveling, and that may be because I I squished the colors around with my finger so I thought I would add another layer and this is kind of actually into wet but it doesn't matter that it's into wet because it still actually is holding itself very well. It's not mushing around like watercolor or something. Um, and so I'm just sketching some more color out. I'm adding some more water, just adding lots of layers. And you can see there that that layer is doing a little bit better in terms of not showing the um, drawing lines and stuff. So then I thought I'd use a piece of deli paper as palette paper, essentially, to see if I couldn't turn these into watercolor paint. So I just scratched out some color and I'm adding just some a clean brush with water. I mean, it's probably a dirty brush with dirty water, but you get the idea. And you can see that indeed you can get a watercolor effect there and you essentially have some paint. So that actually makes me think that the distressed, distress crayons would be good to travel with because of course you could treat them like paint if you needed to just by adding water, which is pretty cool. So then I thought I would try some of the distress cardstock here um, with some of the same experiments just to see if the tag reacted differently and if a different surface did things a little bit differently. So again, I'm smushing. I'm I'm mushing, I'm wetting, I'm trying to see what I can get to blend, I'm layering up different colors and just, you know, generally having a good time. And once, you know, the surface is saturated with your finger, you can actually kind of blend them around. So I am drying between layers to try to keep some color integrity. And I thought I would try to um, scratch the crayon through the stencil. Unfortunately, however, most of the crayon seems to be rolling under the stencil. So then I'm using my finger to kind of blend it around to see if I can't make it help. But it still looks like there's big lumps of crayon somehow stuck. I, I don't even know how it got under the stencil. It must have like somehow wedged under there. But blah, 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 blah. blobby, there it is. So then I thought I would turn it over and see if I couldn't rub some of that excess crayon that was stuck on the stencil through the openings and in fact I was able to and it's really nice so that made me think okay well you just need less crayon to make stenciling good so then I thought I would lightly go on top of the stencil and then rub with my finger and see if I got a cleaner result without those kind of blobs and the answer is yes Absolutely. So a light touch is the key here. So then I thought, hmm, I wonder if I can take a palette and then onto my finger and then rub it through. Um, I'm not sure if I needed more crayon or if this just isn't the right method, but it was a little too light for me. It wasn't quite intense enough. So then you just take some water and smush away that mistake up there where it got all blobby. And I do like that fact a lot. Um, and then I'm just adding again some more color. And you can see that slight contamination, but it's not there in the second stroke. So again, you really don't have to worry about them like permanently contaminating anything. And I'm just adding water and dripping and layering and having a good time. So this is a tag and I just want to make sure it's dry. And I'm putting on a really thick layer of color. Because now what I'm doing is I'm taking a, a cosmetic wedge sponge 
and I'm filling it with water. And then I'm going to dab off some of that water because I don't want the sponge to be too wet. And then I'm going to try to see if I can pull up the color. So essentially the water, I, what I'm trying to do is remove the color through the stencil. So what's under the stencil is going to be protected and what is exposed through the openings, hopefully with water, I'm going to be able to lift up. Um, and I found that with enough time and enough water, you actually can lift up that nice thick coat. And it actually doesn't lift the layer underneath, which I thought was kind of interesting. So um, I think it looks really cool. And that got me going with stenciling even more. So now I wanted to see, could I remove some of that stuff that I had put down earlier that was already dry, that had already been wet, or did it need to be sort of fresh? So I'm just adding... Um, water on through the stencil. I may have added too much water. I'm not sure there, but you know, you're just, these are experiments. They're not meant to be anything other than experiments and it didn't really work. So then I thought, well, I'll put down some color and I'll try this again and see how it works. And boom, with the fresh color, absolutely no problem. And look at that beautiful stenciling that you get right there. So now the question with Distress, because all Distress products are water reactive, is how do you make them permanent if you really want to create layers where they don't touch? So one of the things, because you can see right there, right, I'm able to mush away not only the layer that I'm attacking there with water, the green top layer, but also notice that everything else is coming up too, and I'm actually starting to see the white of the paper. So um, you can scrub at it and try that and see, you know, maybe that's the effect you're looking for to be able to go all the way back to the beginning and kind of erase things. But what if you don't want that? So one of the things I thought I would try is putting some Liquitex matte medium which is just a gel medium over the top to kind of coat it. And I, I was wondering if that thin coat of um, a finish would be able to seal in some of this distress ink. And I think um, probably I did not put a very good thick coat on there, but I, <laughs> I try my best, but I'm just drying it up and then I'm scrubbing with a wet brush to see what happens. And the answer is in some of the places where either I think I didn't apply the gel medium well or something, um, it is pulling up. And the thing is, it looks really cool, though. I like the way that it's pulling up because it's pulling up in this kind of um, like ruined Italian villa kind of way that looks really neat. So that turned out to be kind of a nice experiment because I, I like the way that that looks kind of peeling paint-esque. Kind of cool, right? Yeah, I like that. Okay, so um, so the question is, after um, this step, what's next? Well, now I wanted to see um, what else I could do with a really thick coat. So I thought, well, if you can stencil through it, maybe you can actually remove some of it just with like paint splats and drawing with a wet brush. So there's nothing on my brush other than water. And I wondered if I would be able to remove the Distress Crayon that way. And the answer is meh, not much. So then I thought I would stencil some more on it. And after I did that, I actually discovered that I was actually starting to see some of the other stuff. So then I thought, well, maybe I just need a bigger brush. So then I added some bigger paint splats and I went after it that way. You know, sometimes you wonder about your tools and you can see it shows up a little, not a lot, but you can see like that little half circle I drew at the top and some of the lines and stuff. It's subtle. Um, and then I decided to try a different tool. So I thought, okay, stencil and maybe a baby wipe. Let's see what a baby wipe does. And a baby wipe removes it really well, but it also rips up the tag. So that was kind of a negative. So then I thought I won't push as hard. Um, and then I didn't push as hard and it didn't seem to rip up the tag quite as much, but it's not, um, it's not quite right. Although it does a really great job of removing it. Um, then I thought, what else can I do with a baby wipe? So I put out a bunch of color and I thought, okay, I'm going to use the baby wipe as an applicator and I'm going to get these colors and see if I can not get some kind of like multicolored crayon thing going here. Um, it, mm, I think like, yes, it does sort of work, but the colors um, blended together a little more than I would have liked them to and not quite as harmoniously, I think, as I would have liked them to. Um, but it works also applying through a stencil. So then applying through a stencil gave me an idea, and I thought, okay, well, if I don't like the way the colors are blending, let's just grab one color 
and see if we can't apply one color through that stencil. And again, that worked. It turned out pretty cool. And you can see the stenciling. I mean, it's pretty quick and it's pretty neat. And that's a pretty detailed stencil to be able to do this with. So I thought that was a neat idea just to be using the baby wipe as the applicator. So then I thought I would add some water to this because this is an old trick that Tim Holtz has used forever to use with distressing pads where you take distressing pads, you rub them on a splat mat, and then you go ahead and you add water to them and you kind of create this cool background. So I thought, well, distressed crayons, I wonder if you could basically do the same technique. And the answer is, yeah, you sort of can. It's a little bit different, but it still sort of turns out, which I think is pretty cool. And then I discovered that even if you get little bits of crayon, Take your finger, rub them in, and guess what? Then you just have a spot of color. It's pre it's This is forgiving stuff. I mean, I think that's the thing I really came away with from all of this Discrust Crayon stuff is that it's so unbelievably forgiving. Okay, so I just put out a big field of blue, and I had this idea, which is I was wondering if you could remove it with stencils and you can remove it somewhat with a paintbrush. Can you take a stamp? So this is an art foamy. This is one of my Balzer Designs art foamies. And I just put water on the stamp. And I'm pressing down to see if water is going to remove some of that distress crayon. Boom. And it does remove some of it. And then, of course, I want to see if I can stamp with what's left on the stamp with what I've removed. And the answer is, yeah, you sort of can. You get a nice ghost. And by the way, you should I should note that, like, my foam stamps are actually covered in acrylic paint. Um, so they're totally messy and dirty, and that's fine. Um, but there it is, looking pretty cool. I see all the little details of the foam stamp there. So that's a fun technique to know that that works. Um, and I thought, well, if a foam stamp works, maybe a rubber stamp will work. So I went ahead and I grabbed, this is a Balzer Designs rubber stamp also. This is um, one I made through Impression Obsession. Um, I love the stamp. It's based on a hand-carved stamp that I did last year. And I wanted to see, I'm shaking some water off there. I got a little too much water on there. And I wanted to see if it would pull the color off this multicolored tag. And short of, but not really, really well. Um, so that was kind of disappointing. So then I grabbed another, this is another foam stamp and it's covered in more acrylic paint and I'm using really dirty paint water. I think my water is green at this point, which is why um, it's looking a little green there. Um, and I'm going to stamp it in and boom, I think it's because it's so chunky. I don't know. It just, it did a great job of removing the water and then I get this really cool kind of watercolor print based on what it was picking up. So I really, really like using the foam stamps with it. And actually the more that it dries, I thought the cooler it looked. So my final sort of feeling about the Distress Crayons are they're very much like gelatos. And if you like gelatos, I think you'll like Distress Crayons a lot. Um, I actually like the Distress Crayons slightly more than the gelatos, slight, uh, partially because they're a smaller tip. It's a little easier, and I like the longer barrel as opposed to the small barrel that the gelatos have. Um, they're not like Neo Colors. They're not like uh, sort of like professional fine art level um watercolor crayons which are hard these are a soft lipstick like thing but you can see there's lots of fun experimenting that you can do with them for different results and they kind of work already with your stamps and your stencils etc but for people who you have to remember that they're always going to be water soluble and that's awesome um, but it's also dangerous and you just have to know when you're using them and layering them sort of what that means and how that works and you know while I was staring at this piece I suddenly thought I bet these would be perfect for edging and in in fact, boom, you know, you just throw a little bit of color around that edge and then you can put it down and rub with your finger and it just brings that nice little shadow in that creates that attractive look right around the edge. I have a bit of a cold. You may have noticed. I'm sorry if I sound really stuffy right now. Um, anyway, but so you can see that the Distress Cans, I think are they're pretty versatile. They're easy to use. They come, I think there are three different color packs that they come in, and this is sort of the brights, which seems right up my alley. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you've used the Distress Cans, I'd love to know what you think of them. And of course, come on over to my website and visit me at ballsresigns.com. Dot com. I'd love to see you and you can find me on all social media as Balzer Designs. Thanks.